Best job I ever had. Written by Noob VS, Ata, NVM. Dude, I don't know about that. Trust me, bro. They just got a mammoth. A freaking mammoth. Not only that, they hunt prey in the air, in the water. They kill everything. And that's why they can't eat everything. And what they don't eat, they serve for the most clever motherfucker around. But I can leave a little for you too. What makes you think that it's for us? If they didn't want us to eat it, they would bury it for later, like a normal person. Dude, you're going to get yourself killed and take me down with you. Have I ever got you killed so far? Uh, I'm not going to answer that. Bro, you can go with your tail between your legs and spend the rest of your life working your ass off for the scraps of some alpha. I will get that fat on the stash of the naked apes and laugh at your skinny ass when you drag it nearby. Wait, I'm coming with you. Glad you saw the light, brother. Don't get full of yourself. It's just someone got to protect you from your own stupidity. A hella dinner later. So, am I right? Or am I right? You're still crazy in the head. But when you're right, you are right. Bro, stick with me and we'll go places. Like that river you said was shallow. We crossed it once we passed the rapids, didn't we? And that time you said Sheila's mate wouldn't be around. He never got us, did he? Because we crossed the river that was shallow. I'm too stuffed to fight you, bro. I'm going to take a nap. That, uh, that is the second best idea you've had today. An awesome nap later. Dude, dude, oh, fuck, dude, damn it. I knew it. It was a trap. The naked apes got him. Bro, over here. Where? Here. Are you out of your fucking mind? Get out of here. It's cool, bro. Come over. No, enough. I've followed your crazy ass for too long. You gotta get yourself killed alone. There's no crap under the sun that would make me go into the naked ape's den. Including that. Dude, what is that? It's yours. Just come and take it. I shouldn't. You really shouldn't. It's dangerous. So dangerous. I'd be begging to die. And, uh, here you are. Chomp, chomp. Oh, it's better than fresh kills somehow. Chomp, where, where did you get it? A naked ape gave it to me. You met a naked ape? Lots of them, like the one behind you. He quickly turns around and jumps back. Bro, drop the ack and be cool. Get behind me, and I'll give the sign and we run like the wind. Bro, stop crouching and hide your teeth. You're embarrassing me. Do as I say, we might come out alive. All right, you don't give me a choice. He stands between the human and his friend, mirroring his posture. Dude, what you doing? Chill out, and I'll explain. Don't miss the best thing that's happened to us. More curious than trusting of his friend's poor judgment, he drops the combat stance. Spill it. While your lazy ass was dozing off, a naked ape threw a bone at me. I was full, couldn't eat any more. So seeing it was just a pup, I thought there was no harm in giving the bone back. The dumb pup took it and threw it again. I went to retrieve it and threw it again, and again, and again. All while making this howl which, uh, looking back, I see was a call. Because another naked ape came, a big one this time, with a big ass pointy stick to my face. You ran? I thought, this is it. This is how I die. But before I could do anything, the pup grabbed me by the neck and started strangling me. I put my tongue out, trying to breathe, and the big ape just pulled back the stick. Then you ran. You can't outrun a naked ape. They can throw stuff at you really, really far. So I figured my best chance was to stick around the pup because, uh, Whatever it did, kept me unstabbed. I went further and further into the ape's den and just stuck around. Got to smell the butt of a lot of them and score that juicy meat that you were munching till you freaked out. That's it. You ran around, didn't get stabbed, and you think this is the best thing ever. What makes you think that they can't stab us later? That's the point. They can anytime they want. They don't, and they share their kills. Are you following me? I haven't bumped my head enough to follow your reasoning. Bro, those scraps and bones outside were an invitation, and we're the only ones smart enough to take it. Dude, can't be serious. We're not sticking around to find out how wrong you are. Stay still. What's going on? This is the pup I was talking about. It's squeezing me really tightly. Power through, bro. Ah, it's pulling on my fur. Don't bite it. It really hurts. That's how they mark you to be unstabbed. I can take it. A puy. What's that growl that made? 
That'll be your call sign amongst the naked apes. You got one too? Yeah. What is it? Flu ho. <laughs> yeah, bro. Whatever. A few chill days later, I still don't get why they burned their kills. Really? Your nose hasn't figured it out yet. Fair enough. But what's with those white rocks they rub on it? Bro, you always overthink stuff. The naked apes know their crap. Just get the pups their throw training. Eat your share of the kills and chill by the fire under the moonlight. Not gonna lie. If you said that last moon I'd walk at a fire, surrounded by naked apes, I'd have smelled your head for bruises. Told you we'd go places. Yeah, still not sure how much more training those pups need. Way I see it, they throw far enough. So you're not fetching the sticks anymore? Nah. If that's what it takes for these juicy kills, I'm all for it. Plus, I'm really starting to enjoy our training sessions. So for fuff's sake, stop thinking and enjoy it life for once. You hear that? Papoy said, rapidly lifting his twisted head. Yeah. What do you think it is? Said Fluhu, who made the same movement. So now you want me to think, bro, we're freaking out the apes. They know there's shit, all right. At least they got the sense to listen to me, unlike someone else. I'm going to check it out. Dude, don't. What I just said about listening. Fluhu walks to the noise, followed closely by Papoy and several naked apes. Soon, they're on the edges of the den, facing a different pack of naked apes. This is bad. Yeah, bro, do you smell them? Not the smell of someone looking for friends. Go for the shin, dude! Flohu's teeth sunk into the leg of the nearest ape, who growls and holds highest throat stick with a round rock on the top. Before it can bring it down, though, the pointy stick hits its chest with a force and speed that Papoy never thought possible. His friend in danger... Papoy lets out his most feral growl for his whole life and sprints forward. The naked apes behind him follow, equally howling, and the ones in front, apparently also knowing their crap, scatter with haste. You son of a kitty! We got everything we ever wanted and you still got a death wish. It worked, didn't it? Only because the naked apes got your back. How did you know it was going to cover you? I didn't. Told you. You overthink. Someone comes ill-intended to where we keep our pups. You make him regret it, that's it. Owl pups, yeah. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? The boy had atypically never thought about it, but yes, he did know. A naked ape crouches next to Fluhu and puts his upper paw on his head. What's it doing? It's licking me, I think. But these paw, I don't know, bro. Whatever it is, it's pretty good. The ape's other paw goes onto Poi's head and does the same. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Good boys. Glory or Nothing, written by Weijin Warrior. Sir Hapanki carefully made her way to the bridge of the Terran frigate, using the walls and overhead to avoid the damage control teams as much as politely possible. The repair teams was a lesson that she had hoped to bring to her own ship later, but she knew it would not happen. Sir paused by the warped bulkhead before the bridge, running soft tendrils over the ship's nameplate. Ot Gloria, Ot Nahil. Sir had inquired the captain about the motto, and be told something about balls being out, but she later made the mistake of asking one of the Terran engineers to explain, and had been treated to a long and rambling history of water vapor engines before she had excused herself. Sir was going to miss the Terrans, but if she could not make them respond to the situation, so it was going to miss a lot more. Reluctantly, she lifted her tendrils away from the engraved metal and stepped onto the bridge. Captain, the young Terran captain bent over the tactical display alongside his tactical officer and the head engineer, looked up at the old Lavillian broodmother. He nodded to the other two as he straightened up, his face drawn and tired. Yes, liaison, sir. Captain, the Quell's fleet has broken through the lines. We one could hardly fail to notice, sir. Half the damage you see is from the Quell's kamikazes. Sir paused, one of her minds examining the unfamiliar Terran word before putting it away for later, while her other minds re-evaluated the sentences ahead. Captain, the Lavalian fleet has retreated. We noticed that too, sir. We had to expose ourselves more than I liked to provide supporting fire. If we hadn't, the retreat would have been a rout. Sir paused again. The Terran had stated it without bravado, 
as it was the most natural thing in the cosmos to do. Yet Sir shuddered internally at the thought of the captain willingly exposing his ship and her to more danger than needful. Captain, the High Command has ordered a withdrawal to Leighton 4469 in order to provide a blocking force on the other end of the... Sir, we're merely detached to support the Lavalian fleet. We still answer to Terra Command, and the last order from Terra is to deny the system to the Quals. Sir slowly blinked her many eyes before glancing up at the tactical display. Captain, the Quals are here in overwhelming numbers. They control the gate. Our... That is, the Lavalian ships are blinking out. Captain, I don't think even the Thunderchild can do much beyond bravely perishing. Sir, we intend to follow orders and deny the system to the Quells. So looked from the tactic of the spray to the damage control board. Fully half of it was pulsating, bloody red color. I... I do not understand, Captain. What are the Quells offering this system, sir? Sir hesitated several of her minds probing the question for any hidden meanings or odd angles. The gate, Captain? The gate, sir. The gate is a nexus in the hypernet and would allow the quals to strike well beyond the range of normal blink drive ships. And we're going to deny them that gate. How, Captain? The Thunder Child is wounded, her weaponry expanded, and the quals' forces are gathered around the gate. The Captain smiled, looking briefly over at the tactical officer and engineer. While none of us are experts on the gate, sir, we do know that blinking out while inside the gate will, uh, how did the manual put it, implode and explode simultaneously. So we will thread the needle between the quells, airships, and kind of a uh, dive into the gate before blinking out. It'll be cannons to the right of us, cannons to the left of us, and cannons in front of us. A wild ride through the valley of death, sir. Sir looked aghast. Captain, a collapsing gate might release a Nova-level energy pulse, and what will happen to the Thunder Child that the blink field doesn't build up fast enough? We're going balls out, sir, Hepengi. Either glory or nothing. Or quite possibly both. The captain's fangs were showing, although Sir had to remind herself, not in anger. Well, not all in anger, at least. And while we don't know what might happen to the Thunder Child, sir, we do know what will happen to the Quell ships caught in that pulse. End of story. I'd quickly like to thank the T5 peeps. Cold War Boomerwaffen, Severin Cerberus, Bushmaster 177, Henry the Red, Casper Arnholtz, Cold War Boomerwaffen, Elijah Silvercross, Dragzoon WRE, and Severin Cerberus. Thank you very much.